folks, in this video, I am going to attempt to repair an issue with my 2008 Dodge Ram 1500 uh, that is causing the vehicle uh, to, to die, basically. Um, the vehicle broke down on me the other day while I was driving. Um, and long story short, it turns out, it appears that I've got an issue with the, uh, the part of the wiring harness in the engine bay. Um, and it is causing the engine to die sporadically. And I think what's going on is I, I believe the wiring harness has been rubbing on part of the engine block and it must have, uh, worn through the wire insulation, uh, to the point that it, as the vehicle bounces around, the wire is occasionally losing continuity and it's causing the engine to die. I'll, I'll dig into the reason for that in a little bit more here. Um, but this is a pretty specific problem. Um, I don't know if there's anyone else out there with a 2008 Ram 1500 that's going to encounter the exact same issue that I have. Although I will say that when I first started researching this, I did find a message board post by somebody who did seem to have a, a pretty similar issue. And sounds like it might even be uh, the same part of the wiring harness um, that that is causing my problem. So maybe there's a design flaw here that, uh, you know, the harness is tucked in a weird spot that causes it to rub and over time it just wears through. Um, so again, I don't know how helpful this video will be as far as specifics go, but if you're, if you're having a similar issue and you've got the same engine trouble code that I do, which I'll show here momentarily, uh, this might be a good place to start. Anyhow, um, I have already done a little bit of diagno diagnosis here, and uh, I've connected my uh, OBD2 scan tool. This is a little Bluetooth device that I have. In fact, I just filmed a little, a short video about kind of an overview of how to use this thing. And I've got it paired to the uh, Torque app that you can get on the Google Play Store. It's actually a free app that you uh, can download, and it'll, it'll sync up with the uh, Bluetooth um, adapter that I have. There's a bunch of these, these different Bluetooth ones, um, but again, I have a video about that if you're interested. Um, I'll sh share the link in this video as well. You can check that out. Anyway, I've already pulled up the, the current code that's stored, and it is P0339 powertrain, crankshaft position sensor, A circuit intermittent. So you know, intermittent, it's obviously losing connectivity um, once in a while. Uh, when this first, or most recently when my truck shut off, um, I got all kinds of weird codes. Uh, I think there was a, um, something about the oxygen sensor circuit. Um, there was also a, I want to say there was something about the, there was some kind of random chassis code, which I'm not familiar with it all. I'm not even really sure what that means. Um, those have since cleared, but this uh, crank sensor code is seems to be a uh, you know pretty permanent at this point. So um, again, I've already done some troubleshooting. I've actually crawled under the vehicle with the engine running and found the harness coming from the uh, crank sensor and fiddle around with it and was able to actually pretty much on demand, make the engine stop by um, tugging on the wiring harness. So clearly there's uh, there's an issue in the harness and I'll show you that in a minute. I'll try to, to recreate the, the engine shut off here um, from under the vehicle. So anyhow, uh, that's kind of a, an overview of where we're at and now I'm just gonna dig into it and see if I can find the problem. Uh, basically we're gonna be looking for a section of the wire in the harness that uh, that is chafed or broken. So hopefully I can get to it. I think I'm going to have to probably pull the oil filter um, to give myself some more clearance. Uh, but we'll we'll look at that next. Let me get under the vehicle. I'm going to start the engine and show you uh, what's going on. See if I can make the engine die. All right. So obviously I'm under the vehicle now with the engine running, and we're looking at the crankshaft position sensor, right? right there. You can see the wire going to it. The point of, uh, for reference, 
there is the uh, oil pan drain bolt. It looks straight up above that on the side of the engine. That is your crank sensor right there. And it's held in with a single bolt. Bolt. I think it's a 10 millimeter bolt. It's got a connector here. You can squeeze this and remove the uh, wiring from the sensor itself. But this is the harness that is causing my problem. Um, and I'll demonstrate here in a second. If I tug on this harness here, I should be able to make the engine stop. And in fact, after doing some, some more tracing here, can follow the harness up and you can see it see it moving right there it goes behind the oil filter and if you look let's see here you can kind of see where it goes I don't know if you can see from this angle or not, but it actually goes behind the oil filter. And it's, there's all, I, I'm pretty sure I know where the problem is because it, it looks like it's kind of rubbing on a, on a sharp corner there. So I'm gonna pull the oil filter out here in a second. And uh, I think that's where our problem is gonna be. The trick is gonna be, can we, can we get the bad section cut out without having to disconnect a whole bunch of sensors and actually pull the, the harness out. I don't know. But let's see if we can go ahead and recreate the issue here. So again, I'm going to try to pull on this. Let's see if I can get this to die. Of course, it never works when the camera's on, right? Oh, there we go. So maybe, I don't know, maybe the issue is here at the connector. I don't know. It seemed to die when I was here. I might try to restart this again and see uh, if I can re recreate that again and maybe pinpoint where we need to start looking first. Be right back. Well, as luck would have it, I can't even get the engine to restart now. Um, so I guess just with me fiddling with the wires, I have uh, permanently <laughs> caused the, the issue to remain so uh i i don't know it seemed like when i jiggled here by the connector it uh it shut off but when i first did this the other day i, I seemed to be causing the the engine to shut off when i was kind of pulling like that so that leads me to believe the the problem is up there by the oil filter um and in fact you can see from a better vantage point <clears throat> let's see this is the Looking from the front of the engine, there's the crank pulley, there's the oil filter. Well, that wire right there is that that same part of the harness, and you can see it's kind of rubbing on the engine block right here by the oil filter housing. And you know, that gets hot when the engine's running. I bet you, between friction and just the heat, it's probably cook those wires right there so if I had to bet that's where I that's where I expect to find the problem the good news is that it looks like if I take the oil filter out I can probably get pretty good access and I think if I disconnect some of these sensors I can probably pull the harness out and access it from the top side of the engine I'm gonna have to disconnect the uh, it's probably the oil temp sensor there and then there was another connector back here I'm not sure what that sensor is to be honest with you but that's uh that's in that same part of the harness and then of course I'll have to disconnect the uh, crank sensor all these have squeeze connectors so you know just squeeze with your thumb and fingers and it should slide off I had it off a minute ago Probably use my other hand. There we go. This one looks like you squeeze this side and that side. And gently pull down. There we 
go. So I got that part of the harness loose. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove the oil filter and let that drip first, and then I'll disconnect that connector there. And then I think there's probably one or two more on the top side that we'll have to remove. And then hopefully we can gently just kind of pull this whole harness or portion of the harness out. And it'd be a lot easier to check it out from the top. So let's get this oil filter off and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, so you can see I've gotten the oil filter removed and I went ahead and put a piece of tape on either side of where I think the issue is just so when I pull this thing up um, from the top side I don't lose reference of where the where I think the problem is and in fact putting my finger behind there I feel like I can feel sort of a nick in the insulation so I really hope that there's an obvious problem there that I can fix um, so now I just need to kind of fish this thing out I've, I've also I went ahead and disconnected the oil temp sensor here um, and it looks like there's one more connector there above that that I need to remove and then I should be able to start working everything from the top there's going to be a couple more sensors that we got to disconnect I think that's the EGR that you're seeing in the center of the camera there and I think there's one more that I can see kind of behind that uh, that coolant hose and clamp there in the middle. We'll look at that from the top. Let me see about getting uh, that guy loose and then we will go up top. I'll be right back. All right, I got that second connector loose from right above the oil filter. You can see right there. Uh, you can see the connector is separated from the wiring harness. And now I'm fighting this stupid harness tied it down. You can see right there. See where the harness is kind of pivoting? There's a cable tie there that's got like a push tab or something that goes into the engine block and I can't get it loose. And it's so cramped I can't get really can't get cutters in there to clip it off so I think I'm just stuck trying to wedge a flathead screwdriver up underneath the you can see see what I'm talking about you can kind of see a little bit of separation between that plastic clip and the, uh, the engine block I've just been working that with a flathead screwdriver hoping I can break off the the part that's stuck into the block just to get the wire harness loose. Um, that that connector right there was a little bit tricky. Um, I'll try to show you how that and uh, the oil temp sensor connector work once I if I can get ever, ever get this thing out from underneath here. Uh, it'll be easier to demonstrate up top. But I'm just going to keep working on this uh, tie down. If I can get that loose, then I can. Uh, pretty easily fish everything out of here and go up top. Just wanted to uh, give a quick update on if you're, if you're doing the same thing I am, you're probably going to run into this same issue here with that with that uh, hold down. So just be aware of that. Be right back. Okay, uh, I did finally get that wiring hold down to break off. You can see the harness is now free, and I've pulled the uh, the end of it through up to here, the front cross member here. Um, so that's loose now. Now I can go up top and try to pull it straight up. It would be great if I had somebody to help me to prevent the connectors from snagging as I pull up, but I don't, so uh, maybe I'll tuck them up there for now. So at least I can keep an eye on them. But if you got somebody to give you a hand, they can feed everything through from below. That would be best. Uh, so anyway, let's go up top and see if we can get this thing out. Alright, obviously I'm up on top now. I'm standing on the front bumper. 
looking down at the top of the engine, here's the alternator here. Um, and here's our harness. You can kind of see that portion that we were working on down below. It's hanging down now. But we still got a couple of connections here. We got to contend with, uh, I think this is the EGR here. And it looks like it's got this little safety tab. That I've got to probably get a flathead screwdriver, and I think I need to pry on the red tab on the backside and slide it this way. And then I can squeeze here and disconnect that. And then I've got another one right there under the alternator. And that one looks like it's going to be tricky to get to. So I'm going to deal with the EGR one first and see if I can get that disconnected and figure out how to get my hand down there to that one. I'll be right back. Alright, well I got the EGR connection loose um, and started to fiddle with that other one, but in hindsight, it's really not going to gain me anything because the harness goes back that way towards the firewall and it's clamped you know, here to the valve cover. And I'm really, I'm really not going to get any additional slack, I don't think, by disconnecting that. Maybe I got a little bit by taking the EGR off. Probably not. Uh, so I, I only, anyway, I went ahead and just fished everything up where I can see it. And you can see my two pieces of blue tape that I had put on here uh, to mark where the uh, where I thought the damage was occurring or the problem. And uh, so. I think I'm just going to go ahead and peel back all of this uh, tape that's around the harness so I can inspect the wiring, get any remaining pieces of the wiring loom off, and uh, so I can check all the wire out and see if I got any obvious breaks. And if I don't, then we might have to break out my multimeter and see if I can start checking continuity in them. So let me get this cleaned up at least, and uh, we'll see if anything looks obvious. Be right back. Okay, so you can see I've gotten the, uh, the tape off the harness and I've separated uh, the wiring for the two different sensors that go to the very end. So this is the that second sensor that I wasn't sure what it was. It might That might be the pre-cat O2 sensor, but I'm not totally sure. Uh, here's our crank sensor connector. You can see the blue tape representing about where I thought the problem was. And I'll be honest, I don't want to jinx it because this would be too easy if, if this is actually the problem, but I, I can feel a distinct uh, part in the wire right here where it's melted. And I don't know if you can see right there by my thumbnail. So I can get out of the, sh get my shadow out of the way. Right there, you can, you can feel where the uh, insulation is melted from heat and maybe just from chafing, uh, it may have worn away. And it might just be wishful thinking, but I'm pretty sure in the right sunlight, I can see a little glint of uh, copper on the inside where the wire is exposed. And I think I can kind of feel the same thing on this second wire. It's not as pronounced as uh, the brown wire. But I definitely feel damage in both of these. The third wire feels okay, but I can definitely feel something here. So I'm gonna start there. I mean, that's that's the low-hanging fruit. I'm gonna clip these off and uh, splice in a section of new wire. I might leave this piece alone, um, but. I'm hoping, really hoping that's the case. I mean, like I said, I don't want to jinx it, but if it's this easy, I'll be shocked. Um, but I'm going to start there and then fish everything back through and connect it and see if the engine runs. So let me get some uh, some wire and some connectors and we'll go ahead and make this repair. Okay, I have peeled back some more of the wire loom back to where everything kind of branches off the harness just to inspect the rest of the wire. I don't really see any other issues, um, so I think I'm ready to go ahead and cut out the damaged area and splice in some new wire. Now, the problem I'm going to have is that 
if I just just replace this one section here, my my new butt connector is going to be right there where the damage was. And if you recall, that's where the wire kind of comes down and turns and 90s back towards the um, towards the transmission, and that's where the uh, crankshaft sensor is, right on the bell housing where the engine meets the transition transmission. The problem is if I've got a connector like this right at that 90 degree point, it's going to want to kind of resist turning and going back. So I think what I'll do is clip the wires back here closer to where they branch off, put my splice connector there, and just splice in a longer section of wire to get me past the damaged part where the, where the bend is, and maybe put another splice up here and that way my bend is just wire and then I'm going to do a better job of protecting this um, when I reinstall everything I think I've got some old heater hose that I can slip over the outside it'll be a nice um, a thick barrier between the harness and the uh, the engine block so that hopefully this doesn't happen again but first things first I need to uh, go ahead and splice in the new wire. So I'm going to clip these down here and I showed you these are the weatherproof butt connectors that I'm going to use. Uh, you, know, you slip one end of the wire in there and crimp it, <clears throat> slip the other end in the other side, crimp that, and then take a heat gun to both sides and uh, the plastic around the connector is heat, it's like heat shrink tubing. It'll shrink down and snug up on the wire. And then just for good measure, I'll probably also throw some additional heat shrink tubing around the outside to cover the entire connector. <clears throat> um, and then I've got some, some new wire loom that I picked up from my parts store that I can wrap around the exposed harness to help protect it. So that's the plan. Uh, let me get to it. Alright, you can see I have spliced in a new section of wire to the two damaged parts of the harness using those uh, weatherproof butt connectors that I showed you earlier. Uh, you strip the end of the wire on each end and slip the wire into the connector and then I come from using this guy. I use the uh, 18 and 22 gauge crimp right there and just crush that on either side of the connector until it cinches tight. Um, I hit the connectors with my heat gun. You can see the little uh, weatherproof glue inside that melts and seals around both ends of the wire so that water doesn't get in there. Then I've got some short sections of heat shrink tubing that I'm going to drop down over top of those to uh, offer some extra protection. So I'm going to get this end buttoned up and then I'll work on getting the other end spliced back in to the uh, the other end of the wire that we cut. Obviously we got to pay attention to uh, which color goes to which. I didn't have any color-coded wire so all I've got is black so I'll have to make sure that I get the uh, the correct end reconnected on on the other side. So bear with me I'll get and get all this tightened up and uh, let me start putting things back together. Okay you can see I've gotten the uh, splices made up on both ends now. Um, went pretty well, so I'm ready to start putting things back together. I am going to go ahead and try to tidy up this harness a little bit with some electrical tape. Um, I'll retape these three wires together to go to the crank sensor. Um, and then I, I've got some new wire loom that I can put around the whole bundle to protect everything. And once I get the loom on, I'll wrap some more electrical tape around the outside. Um, and then we can try to start fishing things back into place. I'll be right back. Alright, you can see I've gotten the, uh, the new wire loom installed around the harness. And I've got it taped up. And I'm ready to put everything back. Um, I did want to go over really quickly how these these two connectors at the uh, oil filter housing go. I think this is the oil temp sensor, I believe. This is the one that 
connects uh, down beside the oil filter and this is the one that goes above it. So this one has this little retainer safety thing here that slides. So when you go to take it off, it's going to be pushed over. so cold I can't get it to slide but basically this edge here will be flush with the black you won't have this little space there like that and you'll see the other end of the red tab sticking out here I had to take a uh, flathead screwdriver and push from this side to get it to slide once it slides then you can squeeze back here right there with your thumb like that and then once you squeeze you pull out and it'll slide off this one the one that goes down by the oil filter has this red tab that slides back again everything is so cold I can't get it to cooperate but essentially you gotta slide the red thing back that way and then you can get to the little squeeze tab on the very end right there and squeeze in and pull off all right so I need to feed the, uh, the harness back down through the gap here I've already reinstalled the uh, EGR connector I just need to push this little tab over like that there you go and the rest of the harness needs to go down here between the EGR and the, uh, I guess it's the water pump below the alternator. And then I'm going to try to rig up some heater hose to go around the harness where it makes that hard 90 degree bend and turns back. Um, first I'm going to try to get everything in place and see what's going to work best for that. I'll be right back. Alright, you can see I'm back under the truck now. I've gotten the harness pulled back down from above. I haven't reconnected anything yet. Uh, but you can see there's where it turns by the oil filter housing. It goes backwards. And I have pulled it back over here. You can see there's the end of it. There's the crank sensor, and there's the other connector, and we are ready to make everything back up. And I, like I said, I'm going to try to rig up a piece of heater hose or something to go around the harness where it makes that bend by the oil filter. Let me see if I can rig that up now, and uh, we'll wrap this up. Alright, you can see I've gotten that section of heater hose that I had wrapped around the wire, and I'm hoping that will protect it where it makes this bend. Hopefully I still have enough room for the oil filter to clear it. I think I do. As you can see I just split the uh, the hose so I could wrap it around the, the wire harness. I've made up the uh, connections up here. I just need to slide around, connect the, uh, the two in the back, put the oil, oil filter back on, and uh, reconnect my battery. I forgot to mention earlier that I did disconnect the battery before I started. So uh, we're getting close here and then we can see if the repair worked. I'll be right back. Alright, well everything is buttoned up under the truck and now it's time for the moment of truth. We are about to find out if my repair worked. So, here goes nothing. Nice. That is a good sound. Now, because I had the battery disconnected, they would have cleared the uh, check engine code. So I'm not going to check it with my scan tool right now because uh, that code's going to be wiped out, I believe. Um, so I'm going to let it run for a while. If it doesn't die, then uh, I'll probably take it for a test drive in the neighborhood. Let it get some get some miles on it and uh, hit a few bumps and see if I have any more issues and if not then I think I can be pretty confident that I found the problem um, 
knock on wood, I hope that uh, that was all there was to it. If so, I'm kind of surprised that I was able to find it as quickly as I was. Um, but I'm not going to uh, complain about that. That's It's nice when things go easier than you expect. Uh, so anyhow, uh, this is a kind of a, a specific problem um, for this vehicle, but you know, if you've got a third gen Ram and you it suddenly dies on you or you get a check engine code for the crank sensor like I did, um, I think I'd start where I did, just trace that harness, see if uh, you can tell that it's rubbing by the oil filter, and if so, you might, you know, dig into it like I did and you might find the same problem. Um, so anyhow, I, I hope this video has been helpful. Again, I know this is kind of specific to this particular truck, but uh, I figured while I'm at it, I may as well film it. If it helps one person out there, then hey, that you know, it's worth it for me. So anyway, um, if you've watched this whole thing, I appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, see you next time.